we're going to talk about protein synthesis. Basically, this is how the cell uh, manufactures protein from a DNA sequence. The first step of protein synthesis is called transcription. Transcription is the process of taking a double strand of DNA and making a single strand of messenger RNA out of it. This takes place in the nucleus. The messenger RNA then travels out of the nucleus where it is attached to a ribosome. The ribosome is broken into two subunits. This red circle or oval represents the large subunit and this other yellow colored or gold colored subunit makes up the small subunit of the ribosome. This is where the transfer RNA, this T-shaped strand of RNA, comes in and attaches the appropriate complementary codon. On one end are these three nucleotides that are read for these three particular nucleotides and on the other end is an amino acid. In essence, what this does is it controls what amino acids are added in a specific order based on the messenger RNA nucleotides, which was originally derived from the double helix or double strand of DNA. This forms a long chain of amino acids, also known as a polypeptide chain. Once that polypeptide chain gains um, a specific shape for a function, we then would refer to it as a protein. Protein synthesis can be described as, an as a process by which individual amino acids are connected to each other in a specific order. This specific order makes up specific proteins. They are carried by RNA and involves the process of transcription and translation. So in summary, protein synthesis can be broken down into two main steps. The first step is called transcription. Transcription is a process of taking double-stranded DNA and making messenger RNA out of it. The messenger RNA is then travels out of the nucleus where it is translated by something we call transfer RNA or tRNA. The tRNA adds the appropriate amino acids in a specific order and that is what builds the protein. So first off we need to look at what proteins are. In the next few minutes, we're going to look at some of the players that take part in protein synthesis. In the following YouTube videos, we'll talk about both processes of transcription and translation. All of these processes together are called protein synthesis. Proteins are organic compounds, meaning that they're based on carbon and they're found in living things. They're composed of one or more chains of polypeptides, which are in turn form from amino acids. This is an idea of what a protein looks like. Proteins are very large molecules and they take very unique shapes. They can be hundreds of amino acids long and it's the sequence of amino acids that makes each protein unique. So our body contains many many different combinations of amino acids therefore we use many different proteins in our day-to-day -day activities. Let's take a look at how they are made. Protein synthesis is broken down into transcription and translation. Transcription, taking DNA and turning it into messenger RNA. Messenger RNA does exactly what it sounds like it does. It carries the message of the double-stranded DNA out of the nucleus into the cytoplasm where a ribosome can attach to it. And it's at the ribosome where this protein synthesis actually takes place. Translation is taking the messenger RNA message and making a polypeptide or protein chain out of it. First we need to learn about the process of transcription. But before we can do that we really need to look at the characters that are involved. The characters that are involved are messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. Let's take a look at the first one. Messenger RNA, often abbreviated with a lowercase m, capital RNA, consists of RNA nucleotides in the form of a single uncoiled chain. This exposes all the nucleotides so they can easily be read by the tRNA. 
Messenger RNA carries the genetic information from the DNA in the nucleus to the cytoplasm of the cell. This picture does a nice job of illustrating the single uncoiled strand of messenger RNA, which is part of it is inside the ribosome, and these large green structures represent the tRNA. These colored dots or colored spheres represent specific amino acids. Notice that the amino acids are being joined. The M has already been joined to the R, and in the next step, the R will be joined to the S. It is the order in which the amino acids are added which makes a specific protein specific to a function. Ribosomal RNA, the second type of RNA we're talking about here, is often abbreviated with a lowercase r, capital RNA. This is the most abundant form of RNA. Our RNA consists of RNA nucleotides in a globular form, a large three-dimensional shape, which is joined by proteins. And this is what actually makes the ribosome. So all a ribosome is, is RNA in a globular form with a few other proteins. Transfer RNA, often abbreviated with a lowercase t, capital RNA, consists of a single chain of about 80 RNA nucleotides that are folded into a hairpin shape. That hairpin shape represents a T. This is one reason that we can call it tRNA, or it's easy to remember. There's about 45 different varieties of tRNA. Their main function is to have a specific codon attached to one end and an amino acid that's specific to that codon attached to the other end. This is what allows the cell to know what order or what codon should code for a specific amino acid. Remember, this all happens as chemical reactions. So the chemical reactions allow for only specific amino acids to be joined to specific tRNAs for that amino acid. This is where I'll stop for, t for this YouTube video. The next YouTube video will start here at transcription where I'll outline all of the main things that happen in transcription.